For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomulikai, IFP Deputy Leader Inko Simzamo Butelezi, joins me to unpack the party's manifesto ahead of what is called South Africa's most important elections since democracy. In the build-up to the elections, there is heightened political ten uh, tension, particularly in the KZN province, where tensions are rising among the ANC, IFP, and the new MK party. So what do you think must be done to reduce the threat of violence in the province? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I think I've got a, a bit of a different view when it comes to that. I wouldn't say there is uh, the tensions in KZN and there's like uh, violence between political parties because there's no evidence to that. The only thing that many people now can begin to refer to is what happened uh, last uh, weekend, which has nothing to do with IFP ANC. I think we should avoid actually taking things out of proportion and creating anxiety where it's unnecessary so. So I, I think our democracy has matured so much that we are able to understand that we have to coexist and appreciate each other. You can even see that when there are by-elections, uh, party leaders and party members are able to come, dance, hug and kiss, you know, moving all around different uh, tents, which shows that our political democracy has matured so much that we know that we have to coexist and in many parties there are. That's an advancement of our democracy. And in KZN recently, the by-elections have shown that in certain areas, the IFP is taking support from the ANC. So is the IF IFP expected to be the biggest party in KZN after the May elections? Of course, the IFP is going to be leading that province. We hope so, because, uh, as you say, indicators are all pointing in that direction. And people of course Natal, better for them. They've known the administration of the IFP. They know that of the ANC, so they are able to compare. And we believe that from the feedback that they are giving us and the amount of support that we get from the general public gives us confidence that the IFP will grow significantly and we will be the premier of the province. Mm -hmm. And talking about support, how much support do you think the MK party and the EFF have in KZN? I will be able to say this much because you know I'm, I've not done any kind of survey myself but uh, it's very important to mention that the MK is definitely going to show up uh, very significantly but as the IFP I don't think we are much worried we believe that they will be taking more from the ANC as opposed to us as the IFP and also when we come to the issue of the FF I think you can just look at the reaction of people from by-elections that it seems not to be gaining any support. Uh -huh. And the IFP is part of the multi-party charter which hopes to bring about a national coalition government to replace the ANC should the ANC fall short yes. under 50 percent. So what role is the IFP expected to play in such a coalition government and how would you promote policy positions? I think in terms of our role that we'll be playing that can be determined after the elections because you must understand that the multi-party charter in the main, it's kind of a group of private parties who have seen a need of working together to make sure that when the NC loses the majority, at least we, we, we have uh, started the discussions. But as to what role the IFP will play, that will be determined by the same members of uh, the charter post the elections. Uh, and last year, the IFP signed a service delivery pet agreement with the DA in KZN to improve service delivery and better the lives of the residents in KZN. So how would you describe your working relationship with the DA in KZN? I would say it's a very stable relationship. And that pact that you are referring to was a kind of a commitment from both parties to say we are different parties. We are not, in fact, a, a coalition of, uh, like many other coalitions, where we will be like sort of one party. You are distinct DA and you are distinct IFP. But we have a common agreement to say these are the fundamental things that need to be achieved by municipalities. So it doesn't matter how we differ, but we have to have an agreement to say, but this is what we exist to serve, and we have to make sure that we don't derail on that one. So I, I think. The IFP DA relationship is stable that even if we get into any coalition with them, 
We know that that will last for the rest of the term. No one will advance any agenda which seeks to undermine the very reason why we get into politics, which is to serve our people. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's possible after the May elections at national or even at provincial level that the AFP may enter into coalition with the ANC? You know, in politics, everything is possible. Politics is so fluid such that you don't have plain friends and plain enemies. That is saying that it's being said in politics. As much as we may we view the ANC as a party that should be removed from having power because it betrayed our people, it's betrayed us, it's full of arrogance. But when we get uh, on the 29th of May and we vote, and then they've got their vote below the majority, as I say, if we, it, it happens that we do not actually achieve the right number as the different parties, government at the end of the day must be formed. So it doesn't matter who, as long as that particular party or person agrees with us in terms of our core values, then we are going to be. Because we must also remember one thing, which is very important, and we lose sight of that. The ANC with the majority is totally different from the ANC in a coalition, because all these blunders that they are doing is because of the arrogance and understanding that it doesn't matter what I say, but they will put everything through vote and then we are going to lose there. So I, I think after the elections, there is so much that really is going to be seen happening. And the IFP has pre presented South Africans with a 13-point plan, or as you call it, a program of action. Mm. One of the major focus areas for the party is illegal immigration. So what are the IFP's plans to deal with what the party believes is a national security threat? That is indeed a security threat for our country. Illegal foreigners are lawbreakers. Then that should never be tolerated. There is no one, including yourself, you can't wake up one day and decide to cross a port to any country. It only happens here in South Africa. The IFP will, go in, will do the following. When we take over, we are going to give them six months grace period. All illegal foreigners must pack their bags and go. Or they just have to show themselves to the authorities so that they can be regularized. Because you can't have a country that has so many foreigners who are illegal in this country and are never accounted for. The stats that is always shown there speaks to only South Africans. So that is taking so much from our resources. We found that government would allocate medication in the clinic for 30 people per day, just an example, and only to find that 100 for illegal foreign nationals will go there and then use that allocation for those people who are South Africans. And when they go to clinics, they can't get anything. Some of the failures are not necessarily failures of the government, but because of these illegal people who are not known and they can't be accounted for. So if everybody is regularized and is illegally, it makes government to understand as to how many people are here. So in terms of resource allocation, at least you know what are you dealing with. And secondly, we are going to build these countries where these uh, foreigners are coming from. If you've got large numbers of people coming from Zimbabwe, they are actually accessing our healthcare services. We are going to get all those people and then charge that government for whatever resources that their people are actually consuming from our side. Uh -huh. And the IFP plans to end load shading through a mixed diversified energy system. What will this entail? Uh, this it, it speaks to a mixed, uh, what you call energy, where Coal in the main is one of them. We are never going to abandon coal. That's a resource we've got in abundance as the country. Also, there are more work or job opportunities that comes out of that mining and all that. So we're not going to go away from coal. Notwithstanding the fact that we need to be cognizant of uh, global issues, global warming and climate change. But we also believe as the IFP that modern technology can be able to assist us in terms of mitigating uh, emissions. So we speak of fast-tracking uh, nuclear as government is doing, but we we're going to make sure that we fast-track that one because nuclear energy is also cheaper than any form and also encourage our people to use gas whether for cooking or for heating so that not much 
uh, reliant is on electricity per se, but we have a different like energy sources and also the use of uh, solar panels. As the IFP was saying, every government building, every new RTP house that is constructed must have a solar panel on top. And another pledge in the IFP manifesto is free basic education and reforming the NFSs. So how will, it, how will an IFP government see this through? It's very easy because already government is paying so much money for our education. From the primary we've got thousands of North Fee school and then very few which are actually where you pay a fee but it's not a substantial amount of money. So we are going to have a compulsory free educa basic education and also make sure that NSFAS money is not handled by NSFAS. It gets directed to institutions of higher learning for easy access, accountability and the likes. But over and above, we are going to change the, like, the life orientation and replace it with finance and entrepreneurial literacy so that our people from a high school level at least they understand issues of finance, how to manage your finance and all that, and have this interest already ignited in them of being on their own, running their own companies, so that when they finish school, then they will do courses that will actually equip them with skills of how to become a business person and employ many people in, as opposed to waiting to be employed. And what is IFP's stance on CADA deployment and what processes will you follow to ensure that you have people you trust in key government positions? I think IFP is already governing in Guadalajara municipalities. We've got uh, people in key positions whom we trust, but they all came through a normal system, a transparent system. Because while we, as IFP, we believe that CADA deployment is not necessarily a scene because we, we shouldn't be lying to ourselves and pretending to be ignorant. Even when you define the term care deployment, it will tell you that it speaks to a group of people with expertise and skills. What has gone wrong in the system now? It's because like the ANC in particular has used the care deployment to compensate its activists who lacks the capacity, the capabilities to perform those particular tasks. That's where the problem is now. So the IFP, as much as we need people whom we trust at key strategic positions, but those people must come through the system. They must know how to perform those duties. They must have the skills and experience. It will never be on the basis of the fact that they know Umsam Mubtelez or their party members. We do not work like that. And the IFP manifesto sets out plans for universal health uh, care coverage. Yes. Is this similar or different from the government's current plan of the NHI? Uh, you know, NHI is a noble thing that we all hope for, which seeks to actually achieve universal access. Okay. But the problem is that for us to get there, there must be a lot of work and effort that is being done to make sure that we've got the infrastructure that will be able to advance that. As we speak, you know that our clinics do not have medication, there are no facilities, you don't have nurses, you've got hundreds of doctors who are sitting at home not working, yet you need so much. So the IFP will do the right things first, get the basic right, where we make sure that the in issue of infrastructure is well taken care of, it's maintained, and we build new infrastructure. We have health professionals, nurses, doctors, assistants, who are well taken care of in terms of salaries and their uh, working environment, you know. And then we make sure that we eliminate any form of corruption that could be there. Take some of the powers from provincial legislatures uh, or provincial government to district levels so that the people who are actually responsible for the hospitals and clinics on day to day are the ones that are able to take the right decisions as opposed to someone sitting far there who does not even understand what is happening here is not that sitting with power. So that's what the IFP is going to do. Basically, we are going to make sure that we, we bring things back to the basics. We do that what should be done and we allow the professionals in this field to lead as opposed to a political interference where politics seem to be 
all over and interfering with everything. Mm -hmm. And lastly, just in brief, why would you encourage South African voters to vote for the IFP in the main uh, elections? The answer to that will be the reason why we are here. 30 years into democracy, when we look back, beside whatever that we have achieved, yes, there is so much that we have achieved. Our democracy is something that many countries actually envy. We've got Chapter 9 institutions to ensure checks and balances. There is so much that we have done as a country. You've got uh, like uh, social services to our people, but the leading party has turned against us. In the main, the IFP prides itself not on the policies that we've got, but on the kind of leaders that we are giving people of this country. Mm -hmm. Leaders of integrity who have a strong political will and a keen interest to serve them. I think that is what uh, distinguishes us from many parties. And we've got a track record over and above. We are not saying this is what we can do. We are saying this is what we are able to do and what we have done. If you want to know where, then we can show you to say this is our track record. That was Inko Simzamo Butelezi speaking to Krima Media's Polity about the party's election manifesto.